Hello everyone and welcome to my first Innistrad Crimson WoW uh, draft and this is my favorite draft format, best of three, so sideboarding will be relevant. Okay, so let's pick, uh, see the race right now, because I haven't actually read the spoiler more than like once, so I, I, I definitely don't know about all the cards. I mean, I can't remember all of them. So this is a 7 mana 6-6. Six, six. Um, okay, this, this one makes all your... And of course, with flying, um, all your other creatures become copies of this, basically. Um, it's a pretty fantastic card. I think I'm gonna try it. Seven mana is a lot, but this is gonna end the game if it survives. Uh, basically, to your first end step, and you have, and you have, you know, another creature. So this is um, also an interesting card. Yeah, I do like this Blood Tithe Harvester. Yeah, this is good one too, uh, oh, and this is good one. Okay, that's a lot of good cards in this pack. How about the commons? I don't see anything too good unless maybe the gift of fangs, but yeah, that, there's no time uh, to read all of that. Um, a Dreadfast Demon is something I want to try any, anyway. Um, but like I said, 7 mana is a lot in limited. I will have to try to make sure I somehow get to 7 mana before, I mean, opponent has already finished the game. But this is the kind of 7 mana card that will just win the game. Because at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice a non-demon creature if you do. Uh, you get a, co a copy of these things, so th they just, you know, spiral out of hand. Every creature you play will be, you know, dread fast demons, unless there are demons already. I don't know how many demons there are in this set. Okay, now, that's actually an interesting um, card with the seven, seven mana thing, but I'm not sure how good this is. This is going to be a 5-5 five, five, though. A magma pummeler. I'm not taking the rare here. This is horrible, I think. <laughs> yeah, definitely horrible. Um, Blood Fountain, Gift of Fang. I could take the Gift of Fangs, but I don't know. It kind of feels like um, there's a, there's a, some other interesting cards too. I could take, take this. I think it's quite good removal, but I'll take this thing mostly I mean, not mostly, but only because of my first pick. So this is a 3 mana 1-2 that, first of all, can, uh, you know, add some mana, and then it becomes a 5-5. Five, five. And, uh, of course, uh, it will still continue creating mana. So that will help with my 7-drop seven, seven heroes. That's, that was the reason I picked this. I don't think this is, uh, other than that, I don't think it's that great of a card. But, I mean, still, 3 times you get mana, and then it's a 5-5. Five, five. Mm, it could be a good card. I mean, in any deck. Let's see now. How about here? Black cards? Not this one. Not interested in this one. This maybe I'll take the gift of fangs. This is an aggressive vampire. Um, oh yeah, this is this one. It's it's decent, but it is a five drop. I don't think I wanna. I feel like oh, this is a oh. Do I like this more than the gift of fangs? And it's also green. Green will have ways to give me mana. I think uh, the Gift of Fangs might be good, but it might not also not be that great. It's very hard to say when I haven't drafted the format. Though. It depends so much about how good the 1 mana minus 2 minus 2 is going to be. And sometimes you are playing against the vampires and it's not going to kill even them. Alright, so the hook, the rip hook, right, uh, sorry, the hook hand mariner is a 4 mana 4 4, not even a double caster. So a reasonable size. Uh, for limited, um, and then at, during night it's you know even better. I think this is better than any common werewolf in the previous set, which is quite funny, um, because this is not the werewolf set the previous one was. So how about this thing? Um, okay, so actually, not sure how good that is, but it's interesting. How about about this? Ah, uh, it's too expensive. Ah, uh, it's too too much. I mean, I, I'm talking too much here. Yeah. I'll take the Innocent Traveler. It's an uncommon. I want to at least, you know, test this. Oh, there was the Green Aura. Was it the one that draws your card and gives plus one plus three? If it was, I might have, want, might have wanted to have that, but oh well. Okay, so green and black don't seem to be open in this pack. There's the Honeymoon here. It's an interesting card. I, you have to have a lot of, you know, creatures. Because tapping two is a lot, but uh, five five trampler for three is also quite decent. Um, I don't think I'm taking this, even though it helps me, me with the seven drop I have here. I'm not actually sure if, my, if I'm supposed to switch colors now, because based on this pack, my colors aren't gonna be open. Especially, I have only one green here. I'm not sure. This is a very good card, of course, but I think I'll take the red one. It seems interesting. What's this? Uh, not very good. Bleed dry. Oh, what the heck? 
to, I think this, it is a 4 mana removal and it is also a double caster, but it is for 4 mana instant, basically, it's the same as in Cal Time, the Feed the Serpent, 4 mana instant double caster, exile target creature, this is almost the same thing. So uh, it's gonna be my pick here, definitely. Um, it seems like green won't be open, red is... Uh, this is 5 mana removal, not, not that great, only deals 4 damage. There's another another honeymoon here, so... Anyway, I'll take the bleed drive for sure here, but I'm not sure about my other color. It doesn't seem like... Well, there is a one green 2 drop. I do need some early drops, by the way, I have no cheap cards here. So this is the many thing that gives you blood token for 4 mana 3-3 three, three. with many. It's like... Um, Menis is not as good as flying, but it's still pretty okay. This is more like a life gain payoff. Um, the servitor creates a blood token, all right. Um, expensive stuff. This thing, lifelink, gives a lifelink. Uh, can I play black green? I'll take the two drop. I don't think I care about those other cards too much. And if I can be black green, maybe I'll try that. I mean, I'm not gonna force too much. But let's see, I, I, I need some cheap cards and this at least is cheap. So here, Formula 3-3. Three, three. Mm, transforms into what? Critical cards in graveyard. Okay, I don't think it's that great. But what else? I don't like this. The imprisonment is for like okay, but nothing more than that. Um, fine. I'll take that, I'll take that for a drop. Okay, now it might be time for a gift of fangs. How about this thing? Okay, well, that's... And it equal to its power. Yeah, this is fine removal, actually. It is. But maybe I should take the gift of fangs. I might have some vampires. Does it, of course, you can use this to pump, pump your own vampires, but it's not usually what you want to do. But it's a nice mode to have, I guess. Fine, I take the black cheap removal. There's still the white cheap removal because I think you should quite often be able to cast this for two mana and then if opponent is really on the defensive, you can wait until you get to six mana and kill anything. But um, I don't think now, especially that I have the another two drop, which I really need here. I'll just take this and maybe I'm gonna like semi-force the black green archetype now. Mostly because green will have cards that helps me to get to seven mana, I think. Um, these are not interesting. I guess I'll take the pe specimen if I find a bunch of um, those exploit creatures. Which is web. Okay, so sideboard card and mediocre trick. I don't know. I'll take the sideboard card. This is a best of three uh, draft anyway. Okay, that's uh, fine. I even might main deck it, especially if I want to splash something, but I should maybe cut the honeymoon here so now and try to be black and green now. So, there's the Flourishing Hunter. This is pretty interesting. It reminds me of um, Ravenous Lindworm, but also Ikoria had the same, well, not Ravenous Lindworm, but it had a similar kind of, well, basically the uh, reprint, I mean, well, the same card with a different name, and it wasn't that great in that set. So maybe Ravenous Lindworm was specifically good in um, Kaldheim, but maybe not, wouldn't be good in the other. Uh, formats, but let's see. Uh, that's a very nice wolf payoff, but I think I'll just take the spore crawler. The six drop is nine, nice and all, but this is a three mana three two that draws a card upon, upon death. I think that's really decent, and I still need some early cards here. Odric, not great <laughs> in, in constructed, even though it's a double color rare. Um, at least in serious constructed, it will be fun to build some castle decks around this, but uh, in limited it might be doing something, but of course not for my colors now. There's another one of these things. So basically this is a 4 mana 3 3 flyer that can be a 5 3. Do I want to have another one of those? I have this as an option, so I can have a 4 mana death toucher that sometimes can gain me. I'll actually drain the opponent for 2. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting too, but maybe I'll take the Innocent Traveler. This is a nice flyer after all. I mean, oftentimes opponent isn't going to sacrifice a lot of creatures. Now, that said, it is a triggers on my upkeep, so it will be a 4 mana 1-3 until that. 
So maybe I shouldn't play too many of that kind of cards. Alright, so this is a fine two drop, another Odric, funnily. But now there's a flourishing hunter. Should I just take a two drop or one of these six six? I really like this. Gaining some life is something I want to do. Okay, I'll take this now and I hope to get some of these two drops later on. I don't think the boarded window is playable at all. It really feels very risky because you can just lose it. Uh, but anyway, let's take the six drop now. Dig up. Oh, I have this color combination, so I could use this as a demonic tutor or just to fetch a land. It doesn't uh, accelerate your mana, but this is a really decent card because sometimes you will have time for the, you know, the for the demonic. Well, it's not a it's um diabolic tutor. I think is the four mana uh, to tutor effect. Um, mulch the scorpion is interesting actually, definitely if even if. But I'll take the dig up. It feels like it's worth it. Especially when I have a nice bomb rare, I could maybe uh, have sometimes time to, uh, time to you know, waste kind of my turn casting the demonic tutor effect. Right. So here, this equipment seems very good in aggressive decks. Maybe not so good for my deck. The catapult fodder three mana. Okay. Well, this is actually. I mean, I I could take another spore crawler. I think it's a safe pick. Always. This never fails you. You draw you draw a card from this, unless it gets exiled. And uh, but this could be really interesting because the black green archetype I think is the toughness toughness deck so to say. So um and uh, my deck is definitely playing for the late game and uh, three mana one five isn't really a bad idea at all. So if I control three or more creatures with that have toughness greater than their power, I'm not gonna. Well, I I don't know actually. I should maybe pay some attention to that. I don't have a easy way to transform it now. Anyway, that's too late now. <laughs> oh, I really would want to have this, but there's a bleed dry. This is a tough one. What's this? That's not bad either. I think I have to take the great removal, but man, I do want to have the mana mana thing here. Oh, another four drop. I could take the scavenger. Now I'm taking this, but this is a lot of four mana cards. Oh, heck. This is bad. Oh, I was too greedy here. <laughs> I was too greedy. <laughs> Look at my mana curve. I have a seven drop, six drop. All these four drops. Oh man, this is way too many four drops. Well, I mean, I can take another four drop. I take the life gain thing, but I need to really. Okay. I might have made a mistake picking the. I mean, I should have just taken the two drops there. Do I care about the blood token? I don't think so. What the heck I'm gonna do here? I'm not taking this thing. Um. Well, maybe I could. It's pretty sweet with okay fine it's actually quite nice combination with the flourishing <laughs> hunter okay i don't know what i'm doing here anymore so this can end on the land i definitely take this uh, i need to accelerate into my expensive stuff so i'll take this and i won't be using this a lot on, on creatures but i think i'm gonna be run over here in this format in this in this event now easily um what's this okay that's interesting another now, I, I think I have to take something cheap here, even though it really doesn't achieve much here. Mulch, whatever. Uh, yep. I should have taken the 2-drop when I when I had a chance. I think I took the Hunter over a 2-drop, which I definitely should have taken now, given that the 2-drops aren't really open. So I, I made the classical mistake of picking interesting-looking expensive cards, and now I'm going to have a very tough time to actually... Well, there's another pack left, so who knows? Maybe I can get something cheap here. But I need mostly cheap cards now. All right, so there's a parasitic grasp. This is going to be good. So it, sometimes you can find a human human target, and sometimes you only play three mana for this nice removal effect. Other than that, I would be interested in, in taking any of these two mana two twos. I don't care about the abilities. Two mana two twos. Doom Dissenter definitely fine too. It's basically a 2 mana 2-2 two, two with a delay, but I'll take the removal for now. Also gains me life, which might be very important for my deck now. Um, yeah, I don't think... I, I didn't pick up any exploit creatures yet, so... Yeah, the Catapult Fodder. Um, I think it seems like because you, you need to control three or more creatures that have... Yeah, well, this is one of them, of course, but you need to have two additionally. I think you really have to you know, draft around it because I have a bunch of creatures that don't have more toughness than power. So I'm not sure how reliably am I going to have to, I'm going to be able to uh, transform it. And if I cannot transform it, I don't think I just care about the 
three mana one five that much that I would be playing it. Now this is a fine exploit creature, but I don't need anything that's expensive. This is a four mana four. I have it. Yeah, this could be an interesting sideboard card, but I'm just not gonna play another four drop here. I think I'm gonna cut some of them already. I'll take the evolving watch. It's fine to have. I don't think that pack had anything for me. Yeah, this is bad. <laughs> this is really bad. I'll take the green card here, but but. Mm, yeah, problem is that the early game, which I don't really have a lot of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Phalanx. Bye-bye, Phalanx. I think it's going to be a bye-bye. Uh, persistence. Well, this is cheap, but it also doesn't really do much. Uh, come on, cheap cards. Where are you? I get more six drops if I want to pick them. Well, I don't want to do that. I'll take the full wolf strike. It's it's fine. It's not gonna be night. Well, I guess I have some werewolves, so it could be night, but it's still okay, even if, when it's you know day. So let's take that. But oh, it doesn't really combine well with this thing either. I don't think I care about the mulch. Okay, now there's a two drop. There are options here for two drops. Uh, which am I supposed to take? How many humans I have here? Six. Well, this is gonna get some through guess sometimes. The Doomed Dissenter. It would be great if I had Exploit, but I don't really have. Uh, I think the 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. Maybe I'll just take that. Okay, another one of those. There's also one for... Create a Blood Token. Yeah, I don't have that many ways to create Blood Tokens. I'll take the 2-2. Two, two. I'm actually very happy I get some early game here. Wouldn't mind to have some 3-drop maybe still. But those 2-drops, they help me definitely. So this thing says... Ah, four or more creature cards. Oh, and this taps for one mana of any color. Well, I'm... What the heck? This is actually a fantastic card. Well, it's an uncommon, yeah. Wow. One, two for two that adds for any adds any color and then can become a four four later in the game. Yeah. Wow, what a two drop. Super lucky. Okay, I'll just take another two drop here. I guess the boarded window could be a sideboard card. I'm still taking the 2-drop. I think that's what I need here. Okay, I got all the 2-drops. I don't think I even need the Doomed Dissenter here with the... I have 5 of these guys. I have this Taxidermist. Yeah, I'll take the Spore Crawler, which I'm gonna play over the one five I picked earlier. This is a sideboard card, I think. Okay, so in the end, the pack 3, I think, saved me. I might not have any more 5-drops. Well, we'll see. I have the 113, but I don't think that I'm going to play the 113, even though it's sweet with the 6 drops, I guess. Well, I got the boarded window for the sideboard if I'm ever going to sideboard it in. I guess if someone is really playing a lot of low power creatures, maybe, yeah. So this thing draws me a card. I have one of these in my... Yeah, I don't think... I, I will play at most one of them even when after sideboarding. So I don't think I need one, one, another one of those three mona, mona rocks. Okay, so this is seems to be some kind of a bug because of course in limited you can play more than four copies of a card. Let's see if I can actually do that. Uh, this hasn't happened earlier, so this is something that came with this uh, Crimson WoW patch. Right, so yeah, I think I have enough mana producers here. This is a waste of mana. Two mana to draw a card. Uh, yeah, it, it has an aggressive ability, but this deck doesn't care about making your opponent's creatures unable to block. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, this thing is fun with the, these things. You can gain 13 life. Uh, but the, the problem is this is a 5 mana card and it's also enters tapped. So you are basically, it's going to be a sealed downturn. And then all you have is a 1 power. <clears throat> 13 toughness creature. Now it would be nice if I um, combined it with the catapult fodder for instance, but I don't think it, it feels like if you want to do, go and draft this deck, most of your creatures will need to have more toughness than power. Uh, at least way more than I have here in this deck. So let's just um, keep these things in the sideboard, cut all the lands for now, and Blood Fountain, so return up to two target creature cards. Yeah, it's nice, but it's also four mana, and I don't think I have time for that. And the Blood Token isn't even that great in this deck, because I will want to hit my seventh land drop, at least, and definitely my sixth land drop. 
Uh, so usually you will discard excess lands with the blood tokens. I know I could ex uh, you know discard creatures to find my land drops. That's also possible, but uh, I don't think it's gonna uh, fit in this deck now. I have so many cuts to make, so that's going to be one of the cuts. Okay, so it lets me at least add the five cards in the deck. <laughs> it, it is grayed out, so if I took one of them away, it, it's now bright. But let's see, let's see if this cat's gonna. Come on. Oh, is it not gonna let me do that anymore? Did I make a mistake? Huge mistake. Oh, look at what that did. Can I do it in this mode? <laughs> oh, come on. What is this? I need that in my deck. Um. So I cannot add this to my deck anymore. I guess I have enough early game, but I would have played all five if I could. <laughs> okay. Don't think this is something I'm gonna ask for a refund because of this, but um, good to know. You can play five cards, but I just can't add it to the deck. Can I? You know, not even this plus sign won't work either. All right, all right, fine. Have it your way then. I have still at least this early game. I'm not sure about the specimen though. I don't think I like it. Mulch. I don't think a lot of my stuff cares about mulch. I would need to have. So this, of course, the idea is that it, well, can get you some lands, hopefully at least one, but uh, it also fills your graveyard, which is good combination with the reclusive taxidermist, but not sure I care about it enough. Now. Nah. Mulch goes away, and I think I'm gonna just cut the catapult fodder, and I suppose that's 23 now. If I could, I would put this 2-drop and um, cut one of the 4-drops. I don't like I have so many 4-drops in here. And so this thing says, discard a card, it becomes indestructible, tap it, yeah, okay. Transforms into a potentially big creature, but this really seems bad for my deck. I will play the Innocent Traveler. But I think I'm gonna still cut this, and there, yeah, like I said, if I could, I would put the two drop. But now that I, there is no way to put the two drop back in, I'm gonna play something else. Man, I could play a mulch, but pr probably not. Probably not. So how about something weird? Do I want to have the alum here? So the thing is, I have now this thing that adds mana. I can get a land with the dig up. This thing will add mana unless it well, it can also die easily. But then there's the Nature's Embrace, I can enchant the land, and it will add extra mana then. So, I feel like I have enough ways to, you know, hit my land drops or get some kind of mana sources, so I don't think I care about the heirloom. It will exile cards from a graveyard, so it, it, maybe I will sideboard it in in some matchups. But maybe I just have to play something like a cheap trick. This will give reach and it will untap. It's not the worst trick, I'll play that there because I can't play the two-drop creature. And um, I guess that's it. Only seven black cards. Um, but I got a very late bleed dry there. I'm not sure. I, I guess I was a bit married married to my first pick in the draft, but um, well, it's the first draft. You can do some bad stuff in the first draft of the format. Let's see if I can get a couple of wins. Mm, adding the lands now. What's the land from this set? Uh, this this is the forest. Okay, uh, it's a bit too dark to my taste. It doesn't. It seems like, yeah, it's not the best. Not my favorite, but whatever. Um, I think with all these double casted blacks, I will be playing eight swamps, even though I have only seven swamps in the deck, and even though I have all the mana fixing here, but I have the evolving wilds. No, okay, and I, I do realize now that I need the green always. But I guess, I mean, I, I want to be able to cast this on turn four if I, if I have this in my, in my hand. I, I want to be able to have the two black on turn four. Hmm. Okay, okay. What to do? What to do? Seven forest or eight? 
sorry, um, eight forest or nine forests. Uh, now these things will help. Nature's Embrace will add two mana of any color. So I, I suppose this does work to cast my... Yeah, so here's the... I, I will play nine forests because um, even though that's only seven swamps and one evolving, evolving wilds for four double caster four mana spells plus the seven mana spell, which is not that relevant. Uh, I still have the Nature's Embrace that will be... I can play this in time before... I will be able to cast these things. There's also the statue. If opponent doesn't kill it, it will tap for black. And also the dig up, I can use it to uh, get the swamp if I need to. And this, also, of course, will tap for black too. So I think it's enough black sources anyway for the double casters. Let's see if the swamp is any better. Um, okay, I like it better than the forest. They look a lot... The, oh, it's the same location, isn't it? I mean, at least the same... What is this cart or this thing is? Yeah, it's probably the same location. But anyway, let's let's add those now. And uh, okay, let's one, one more time. Let's try to add this disciple to my deck. It doesn't do that. All right, fine. Done. Okay, so will I be on the draw, I would assume. I will be on the draw. <laughs> Five forests, no swamps and not even mana fixing. I have a two drop and a four drop. Now, if this four drop was castable with this five lands, I think I would keep it because this is really a deck that needs all the lands. But opponent mulligan, so I will I will be doing that too. And now this is a lot better. I will be cutting um it will be interesting to see if the opponent has anything cheap that, that isn't vampire i can kill it with this thing uh foreboding statue i think i will end, end up cutting the embrace i have still three lands and the foreboding statue here maybe that is enough should be able to cast the photo at least okay the, that thing has least uh, yeah that's actually not so fine because uh, this can be played as a 3 mana aura from the graveyard and it will give plus 1 plus 1 and flying. That's not something I want to be facing here. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so first of all, if I just kill this now, they can make this into a 2 for flyer if they want to. I'll be taking 2 damage here anyway, unless they want to start discarding creature cards. Okay, draw 2. Okay. Draw three and then discard a basic land or a two cards. All right. I'm assuming it's gonna be a basic land. Oh no, it was a two two card. Syncopate and Wandering Spirit. Is this mono blue? It could be mono blue. Okay, statue. Finally, I get to play something. But I they only have two power. I'm not in any kind of a rush here. Maybe I will find a <laughs> target for the gift of thanks at some point. I suppose I can, if this transforms, I can actually, <laughs> I can actually, um, this will be a vampire when it transforms, I can make it plus two, plus two. Alright, so now they are playing counter spells, so I'm assuming something will get countered here. Oh, I'm gonna play the Evolving Wilds here. So, uh, oh, they have even the good counter, oh, this is the rare flyer that has the exploit, sacrifice a creature when it, and you do counter the spell, ability, something like that. Now, that was bad. Um, I mean, it was bad mostly because now they have a 4 power in the air. And, uh... Okay, they get... Well, it's not over yet, but I need to find one of my removal spells, for instance. I have some uh, multiple cards that can remove this thing. Alright, so now let's have this thing. And I will not attack with this because, of course, I want to put an omen counter on this thing instead. So I can do it at any point. At my end step, three or more untap and transform. Okay, so I suppose I just don't do anything yet. They can discard to draw. They didn't want to. I will go to eight here now. You want to, if you discard a card, oh, it, it transforms into a three-three. Okay, nasty. 
Um, so they, that's what they used to. They saved the blood token for that. Okay. And it will be a vamp. No, it's it's a human warlock, but it's a three-three. So my gift of thanks won't be able to uh, deal with it. So uh, if I don't draw a removal on the three-three, I'm gonna lose the game. Yeah, the the overcharged amalgam was nasty. They have this thing. Okay. Yep. If they get to transfer transform this thing, that gets minus two minus oh. Sure. So now they can sacrifice a creature to keep this from becoming a flyer. They chose that thing there. Okay, there's a bleed right now. I need it at this thing. So this will become a 3-3, but this will, at the beginning of my end step, untap it and transform. So it will be a 5-5 able to block this thing, hoping they, oh, they can use this lantern bearer over there. Okay, that actually means I need to, yeah, I need to use them bleed dry on, on, on the witch there. Yeah, this is an instant. Okay, so I will add mana. I will also not use the gift of fangs here at all now. I don't think it makes sense. And this will untap. And now I have a 5-5 five, five blocker and I hope they will use this and I hope they don't have anything on the bleed dry there. Um, yeah. I won't be letting it to attack because then they get a trigger, but I want this thing to get exiled. I mean this, uh, if I, if I, because if I would in response kill it, no, from anyway, I think it would have been exiled anyway. Well, no matter what, I will, they couldn't uh, do anything to that. And now they actually will let me, well, no, they might have, okay, now they won't be sacrificing the amalgam. So I will have, I will have a, um, a one three, but it's a vampire, so I can get, make it into a three five. So this is gonna be tough. Um, this mana, okay, I will play this right now. Let's see if they have something to deal with it. Counter target creature upload, but okay, fine. That was countered. So I have to do this. It's a vampire. It's gonna be a plus two, plus two. I get to attack for five. And <laughs> then it's all about if they can find an answer for the three, five. Now, this, I won't be dying right away because I am at five. So if they do deal with it, I still, okay. This is insane. Oh, this is an insanely good card. Such an efficient three, one flyer. Okay, I'm beating the, by this, getting beat by these threads and also Vampire's Kiss, which is maybe not that amazing. But I guess if you have a lot of blood token synergy, it's going to be okay. Now, how do I do this? Definitely the uh, reach giving spell is going to be useful. Anything else in my, anything with reach? No, nothing. I mean, I just have to try to raise them. Uh, the boarded window won't be good either. Um, it will give the creatures minus one, minus O, oh, but uh, they will be still be able to uh, deal um, four to me at some point. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to have the crushing canopies, and I think I'm going to have both of them. Those two rares are basically enough for that. So what I don't need here, the gift of fangs was pretty low on targets I'd, I'd rather remove it to have the crashing canopy there and then i will cut i think uh, yeah. well how much it gonna be um really tough to cut anything here actually i like the nature's embrace it will help me get my six drops Hmm, this is removal that does work. Okay, maybe the witch's web. They are playing blue, they can have instant speed interaction. And the crossing canopy is just gonna be better than the web. So fine, let's do it like this. But yeah, that was two pretty nice rares I got beaten by. 
Yeah, you know, actually was able to stabilize there, but they had a three one there. Now I can at least keep no two drop, but at least I will have a three drop and then some other playable stuff if I draw any land, and I can still play the wolf strike even if I don't draw a fourth land. A spore crawler will also potentially give me a card. Okay, they mulligan again. I mulliganed in the previous game, but so did they. But now they mulliganed again. Yep, that is a decent one. Oh, should I maybe... Hmm, maybe I should have the thing that exiles stuff from graveyards. Yeah, I should... I have the 3 mana aura that I can use to enchant the land or a creature. Uh, but I think I should put the thing that exiles from graveyard. Yeah. Okay, well there's a crossing canopy. Am I going to even try to race here? I guess I'm trying to race here. I really needed to land drop, but at I have two spells I can play. I'll see what they play, and uh, I'll take this three still, and see what they're gonna have there. And I'm gonna use the well. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Am I gonna kill this thing? Can rip. If they have anything on this, this wolf track will be wasted. I guess if they have a kill spell, but they might have a bounce spell. Yeah, this is annoying. I'm gonna just do this. It's not great, but if they are gonna use this land temper, I mean, they, they will be in the graveyard now. They can use it as a three mana spell, but then I hope to use the wolf strike. Wolf strike in that case. Oh, I still don't. So actually, I kept four lands. Sorry, uh, I kept three lands. I have drawn four cards. None of them actually was a land. Let's see if they have a flash spell there now. So they are gonna go for it. Yeah, if this goes to graveyard from anywhere, in including from stack, it should work. It should work. Let's do it right away. It should get exiled. Yeah, it did get exiled. Now that was good. And they have another one of those, but now I'm winning the race and finally I drew an axle. Land. Wow. Now I should be in a good shape because they will have to either start sacrificing stuff or this becomes a 3-3. Both options are good. And it becomes a 3-3 flyer. And this is... Oh, this is the milling thing. Okay, fine. I don't care about getting milled here, I don't think. So they do not sacrifice and then I can just use my bleed try to get rid of this guy and probably win the game as a result now. more of these okay <laughs> well let's just attack if they wanna trade that's fine I mean my flight has to be dealt with here now they have that which is fine doesn't actually do anything drawing a card here now and um, nature's embrace so I can can I let's see <laughs> Let's not make any stupid mistakes. No, if I do this, I will only have three mana available, so... Um, let's have another one of these guys then. Okay, four mana, three, three flyers. Quite like it. Draw three... Okay, they can discard a basic land and keep two. But I'm not done with... I mean, if I draw a land, I will be doing all of this stuff. And Nature's embrace... Oh. Okay, they didn't have a land to discard, so they actually drew uh, uh, three spells, but now they... Okay, they have a lot of these guys, but they have, all, I suppose, some blood tokens too. So they're gonna... Do that. Mm. So I can just force them to... Block it, right? That's right. 
creature gets plus two plus two. So they have three, so they have to jump block. And then um Even if they find an out on this thing, I just can play my both of my six sixes and then this seven seven is coming. They need to really draw some crazy stuff here back to back to back in order to survive here. Syncopate, okay. They get to pick two card from with this thing. Okay, they have a bunch of card draw the effects there. And now they need something to deal with this. And the creature won't be enough because they will have to sacrifice it. Or this becomes a flyer. So they, well, I guess a flying creature could be working. All right, so definitely the nature's embrace should be a this heirloom because this can exile the. They have multiple of those one ones that become become um you know the the aura that gives flying. Uh, any reason to play the gift of fangs now that I saw that they have multiple of these. This is I can kill the racket recluse quite easily and I saw three of them. Um it doesn't kill a bunch of this other stuff that easily but I guess I can kill something like a lantern bearer if I have the heirloom out. So I feel like especially on the draw I wanna play this if because they could have one of the three two ones on turn two there. So I will play this thing but I will cut what I don't I mean I kind of maybe want to cut the dread feast demon because ah, but this is that's a good late game for me I don't want to do that but do I need to the wolf strike is somewhat risky but Now I have so much mana producers that I do want to have this. I suppose they also have a bunch of counter spells. So resolving a 7 drop might be a bit tough sometimes. Now I'm going to have the wolf strike here. Cut here. I have a couple of those canopies, a couple of those 4 mana removal spells and then the thing that can deal 3 damage. Hoping they are enough for removal, and then I'll just uh, try to have a good curve here. Uh, okay, I'll keep this because my deck is weird. Oh, they are unlucky. They have they had to mulligan again, so they mulligan in each of the three games now. Do they keep six, or do they even go to five now? My hand is definitely not great, but I, I suppose my starting hands haven't been that great either. Or maybe, well, I mean. I kept this because my deck is really, you know, focused on heavy, heavy, heavy plays here. And I have now, I mean, I might miss even my three drop, but at, at least the opponent only has one power creature. And now they have this thing. They can discard a creature card. Okay, they draw a card. They don't need more than one of these. That's all acceptable, but I would. Mm. Okay. So what does this say? If you discarded a card. Yeah, of course, any discard works, not just the blood token. I was somehow confused why would this transform, but of course it works with any discard. So that's actually a nice combination. Yeah, they had a very good curve out. Um, and I'm not even going to use the dig up for a land because I don't know if I'm going to ever have time to use the four mana version, but uh, I don't need a land here at all. Like, really at all. So I kept a... I, I mean, I drew, I drew three cards, and none of them was a, a spell I could cast with three mana or less. I guess the dig up was one. But yeah, I'm, I'm now losing because I kept a hand, and I, I needed to draw at least one thing here. Well, I'm gonna do this. I mean, this will... I guess if they have an answer for the 4-4... Four, four, uh, it's actually tough now, because if I play the 4-4 four, four and they don't have an answer, they can't attack with either of these. I take only one. But I guess I need to do this now anyway, just to be sure that I get to kill it. Now I'm taking only two per turn. That is somewhat acceptable. I can play the Hookhand Mariner on the next turn and then the Flourishing Hunter on turn six. Ok, 
Okay, so they can discard a card again with the blood token or, or the entombed him. But now let's see if they do have an answer for. Yeah, I, I, I think their deck is better than mine easily. But um, let's see if I can get lucky and still get a win here somehow. Now, if I, if they have interaction, I'm taking six here. Okay, well that's that's that. That's a three power flight, and I go to down to six now. Yeah, this dream shackle, guys, this is really good. It's it's amazing how good it can be. Um, so I will gain some life here. It's just not gonna necessarily matter too much. But I can still find answers for the flyer, so I have to keep both of these. By the way, uh, I mean I can't attack with this because they will be able to tap one of these guys. So I will take four at least. I will take 9 if they can deal with the remaining card. Yeah, well that's what happens when your first play is going to happen on turn 4. On the draw. It's not going to be easy to win. But yeah, this rare is also doing a lot of work for them. But I'm at... I am... I can... I can get a... Uh, okay, I can get a crushing cannon. Now that is sweet. Can I actually pull off a victor? I still need to deal with the lantern bearer, but that that did help me a bunch. They also didn't play anything, so I, I can attack for 12 here. Problem of course is that uh, then they I will need to be blocking the 3-3 three, three here. I will be double spelling, I think. So canopy and the... Uh, so how much mana I have? I can play the heirloom and then I will have 5 mana left. That's enough for the disciple and the crossing canopy. But I don't want to just jump block with these things. I suppose I'm going to attack for 6 now. And now because they have so many counter spells I definitely will... Okay, jump block is fine. I will definitely play the crossing canopy right now. I'll play the heirloom first. Kill this thing. Play the disciple. And now the dig up. I can dig up a four mana spell, but all but I can't dig up a double black spell and play it because I only have three black mana available if, unless I did draw a swamp. Um but let's see. Oh that's that only if you own a card in exile. Which they do. Okay, so I don't think I can win now. Don't think, because they can make this unblockable. And they can attack with this thing. And the, and the thing I can, you know, get with this thing, I don't... Oh, this is human warlock. Oh, it's gonna be another... Oh, the thing that is... Oh, I can kill this. I can kill this. Because I have the one spell that deals 3 and gains me 3. Um, but it's double cast normally, but against humans it's, a, it's a just one black and one uh, generic mana. So I can actually get use 4 mana for that, 2 mana for that, and I can even play the Disciple here. That has ward 2, so I don't think I'm going to be able to attack with anything else than the Hunter. But yeah, let's attack with the Hunter now and see what happens. They might block with the Lantern Bearer. They don't. Okay. So dig up. And get me the only thing thing I think can answer. It's the bleed dry. No, not that. That's that's exactly not the one I was looking for. It's the parasitic crasp. Target human. It's gonna be and it's also an instant. Okay then. And this is a, a tutor effect that doesn't require me to reveal that card. So I'll take this thing here. But I, I know they have the counter spells, so I definitely should play this save. And do this. And then if they want to attack with the 5-5, five, five, they can do that. 
but I can draw another answer now if I'm lucky. Because I will die in two turns. Problem is they can jump block the 6-6, six, six. although, yeah, that's gonna be enough. Uh, even though they don't uh, play a spell, this will only be a 6. They can jump block the 6-6, six, six. Uh, but they, yeah, if they use 5 mana, and they do. Let's see if they have a play available after that. I need to draw something. Even a human will be enough. Yeah, it will be enough, but in, because if this got the triggers, no, it would have, wouldn't have been enough. This is only, yeah, I needed to draw specifically a removal spell. So this is not doing anything. Exile a card from a graveyard. I needed specifically a removal spell. Nothing else would have worked here. Yeah, kill this and, and attack for the win. Mm, that didn't happen, so I can just... Yeah, that was a close game, but um, and I drew the outs I needed there, but I, I mean, in the end, even though the opponent had to mulligan in each of the games, problem is I didn't have any early plays in this game. My deck has, but I kept the 5 lander and didn't draw a 2 or 3 drop in uh, my first 3 draw steps, so I had to play my first thing on turn 4. Yep. So this will just be an unblockable attacker on the next turn. I can attack now with everything, but they will jump block the 6-6 six, six, or the 6-4, take 10 and that's it. I know I could have attacked, but they would do it anyway. So I wasn't really counting on them doing like a misclick or anything. So a bad start for the format, but I guess the deck isn't the greatest, maybe. But I think I should have better. I mean, I still have five two drops, for instance. It's not. I'm, I have a bunch of three mana plays. So I guess I just um, could have mulliganed in the final game in that had match. But I felt like I didn't want to mulligan when my deck really needs to have a lot of mana to operate. So the five lander felt okay. Mm -hmm. Here are the two drops. No green mana. Sure. Well, I suppose <laughs> opponent mulligan too. So I'm, yeah. This is the fourth game in a row when opponent mulligan. But it also is. Well, I have mulligan too. But let's just focus on things that matter now. I have at least a three drop here, and I can kill a non-vampire one drop. Uh, is that annoying enough? I guess not now when I have my own two drop. But this can be pretty good. They gain one life each turn, and. Uh, this thing was great with training, for instance. Okay, so that's... Activate as a sorcery, so they can't activate it now. Um, I'm gonna play the statue, don't feel like I need to. Am I gonna take the trade? They can double block here. But do I care about it? I mean, I can easily just trade here. I don't need the 2-2 two -two here in the end. Okay, so for some reason they didn't want to gain the one life, or they didn't realize it's a sorcery activation. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, now they're reading it, so yeah, they thought they were able to do it right away. Now they can attack with this thing. Oh, this has vigilance, didn't realize. Um. Mm -mm. Okay, they are missing mana. So if I attack with this, I don't get an Omen counter. Yeah, well, I don't, I'm not going to attack with it then. Maybe just kill the officiant, or maybe kill this. I mean, this is, yeah, I'll, I'll kill the thing that gains them life or so. So I'm gonna add black and do this. I guess. Oh, and this is a vampire. <laughs> oh, man. Imagine me using this <laughs> on this. Oh, I didn't actually check it out. I, w I thought about killing this. Well, it would have been a, a 3 4 in that case. Okay, well, I'm not having good time myself with all these land draws, but the opponent is uh, stuck at two lands now. Um, and I will be getting a 5-5 five five at some point. Um, I wonder why did I tap this? I mean, this doesn't have a sorcery speed activation, so I don't know why did I tap it on my own turn in the, uh, in the on the previous turn. That made like no sense. I can block this thing. I'm not sure though if I want to. Okay, they conceded because they never drew a third land. Well, that was an 
uneventful game, but I suppose I was flooding out quite a bit. Um, I had only what three spells in this game, so could have been quite bad if they had like a normal through the draw here. All right, I didn't learn a lot, except that the vampire cleric is. I mean, this thing is a vampire, so I cannot kill it with gift of fangs. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Do I care about? No, I still can't put the disciple in. Um, the canopy maybe, but maybe not. They play white, so they can have some disturb stuff. So I could maybe have the nature's embrace replaced by them. Um, heirloom. But the thing is, I do like the option to sometimes give it a plus two, plus two, more than just have this exile option available. So I guess I'm not gonna do that swap right now. And I didn't really see a lot from their deck, so I'll just. Um, I guess the one thing I could have maybe is the minus one, minus o to opponent's attackers. Um, well, I will learn more about their deck soon, I guess. Okay, so a fifth game for the opponent is this going to be a non mulligan for the first time? At least I have a nice hand here. Very nice, 2-drop, 3-drop, bleed dry. Maybe I will dig up for a forest. Opponent kept 7. Um, I feel like I'm gonna get, a, sorry, not forest, a swamp, unless I draw it now. Okay, well I did, which means I'm not gonna get a land with this thing. But if I didn't draw specifically a swamp, I would have gotten a swamp, just because I have the bleed dry here. Vampire Slayer, it's a vam uh, no, no, it's a human that slays vampires, okay. Um, Disciple, the spore crawler will be decent. So this will kill any vampire it deal deals damage to. Don't think it's gonna be super relevant. So green white. I only saw a couple of planes from that deck in the first game. Are they not gonna attack with the slayer here? They are not. Am I gonna attack with the this is not a human. This this gets, of course, pump effect temporarily. I don't mind the trade, I don't think. So I'll just um, attack. Okay, I got more of these. I guess I can do, do this tutor effect on turn 5 if I all, all I get is something like lands. But I guess there's two draw steps for that still. Okay, so this thing draws a card. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just bleed that thing dry. It has Vigilance, so it's gonna be... Oh, well, especially now that I have another one of those. Let's exile that stuff and attack for five here. Now they don't want to give me a card, so this got through. I really like this card. Nice uh, three-drop common. Kind of fair, but it's never gonna be bad when you're playing it yourself. So I don't, I don't really mind if opponent uses a 2-drop to trade with this. They get slightly tem more tempo, but uh, I get an entire card with that transaction. Hmm. So this thing is probably something that's gonna die. Lifelink? Yeah, okay, okay. Um. Bye-bye. Now it, it has lifelink only on a specific circumstance, but it was still, I mean, I couldn't have attacked, I couldn't have blocked, of course I had to kill it because I have, I could have used the dig up for something, but that doesn't really feel like something I need to happen here. Okay, well, you know, I'm gonna get my first pick in the draft. Definitely I'm gonna do that. Um, so this is a tapper. I could play this, but then I can't know. Next turn I will just play the, I mean, they have to, they have to find a way for the seven drop. And tapping it won't be enough. Tapping it won't be enough. And they, they don't even see it, because when you can get any card, you don't have to reveal it. So the f this Dreadfast Demon will be good, especially with the Spore Crawler. Because um, it, I will get to draw a card, so I will sacrifice a non-demon creature, and this is a fungus, not a demon. And then it's gonna... I get a copy of this thing. And then that's two 6-6 six, six flyers. And then I can eat... I mean, feed more cards to it. 
So, um, no blocks there. Uh, that's mills and then it becomes big, but I will have some... Oh, they milled only three, so it's only a three, three. Now, I know they are not gonna block it, this thing. It... I, I can deal three here. What's the worst thing that can happen if they block? I get to draw a card, and I will just play this and this, and then on the next turn I play the demon, so I can make one of these into a... Yeah, so I think I, I have a pretty easy three damage here. Unless they have a trick, of course. No, they actually... <laughs> I don't know what happened, but that happened. All right, whatever. Um, let's play this. This can no, it doesn't matter really. I guess it's. I, mean, I I try to you know make all the, these become you know seven seven. So it doesn't really matter. I'm very surprised about the block. They didn't want to go to 9. Oh, they have that, but that's completely fine. Oh, do they have a land drop? They even don't. So they can exile this thing with 5 mana. But funnily, um, I can sacrifice that before it happens. Can even play both. Yeah. So this is my first pick in action now. <laughs> no, it's not a 7-7, seven, seven, it's a 6-6 six, six flyer, but it's good enough. So next turn I will sacrifice both of these other creatures, and I will have four 6-6 six, six flyers. So it is a really good card. Even though it costs 7 mana. Okay, can I remedy this draft and uh, go from one pack to four packs and thousand gems? One match left. <clears throat> so I have a fine-ish hand. Yeah, it, it's a it's going to be a keep. But let's see if opponent mulligans. They kept. I will keep. So let's be careful about them playing vampires. I don't want to pump their guys. Okay, so the same kind of stuff is happening now than happened in the previous game. Am I going to just... <laughs> I feel like I'm going to take so much damage. This is not a vampire. That I'm gonna just do this because one one reason I'm, I'm just killing this even though they will get value out of it at some point is that I can just bleed dry you know that thing that will be um, enchanted by that thing. That's a spirit. So yeah. I hope they do the lantern bearer because it's actually pretty good. Um, but the exile this oh this is actually also not so great but le well let's see what happens they didn't go for the better here i mean if they have a creature to play that's the all right okay okay so this also has this step i can exile it but not on this turn protection from vampires <laughs> oh man well, I guess I'm going to gain three life then and hope that I could play the nature's embrace, but I'm not really sure if I... I'm taking here so much damage. Okay. Okay, so this is gonna be castable from the graveyard. Now, that's also a rare. This is also fantastic uncommon, so I'm, I'm facing a very... I mean, the opponent actually started with the... Look at the curve there. This is actually a fantastic curve. They have the lantern bearer. They have the very good two drop. And then they had this nice rare three drop here. And this thing has defender on this. Okay, fine. Um, so. I guess I have to.
Well, I'm gonna do this now. So nature's embrace on the forest, I suppose. Maybe on the swamp, I have more swamps than forest, so... It will tap for two of any color. If it is a land. Sure. And play the disciple. Now, I do understand that... Uh, um, I will be taking some damage. Well, maybe... Okay, they can play the lantern. They should maybe, even if they have a fifth land, maybe they shouldn't have this thing first. But I'll see what the happens. Because of course I'm gonna bleed dry something here at least. I, I want to bleed dry the Catilda's Rising Dawn because this is just amazing. Uh, but... Well, let's see what happens. This is a wolf. So this has protection from vampires, not from wolves or werewolves. Okay. Hmm... Number of permanent to control at our spirits and or yeah. Okay, th so they went for that, which is good for me because now I can exile this thing. Now I'll take a bunch of damage here though. So this says No, they can't attack with the spirit here now. I'll take only six. <laughs> well they can, but I can trade with it, and that would be fantastic for me. Um, they can't get the first track because it does cost mana. So why are they doing this? That that would have been a perfect target for the lanterns lift. Not sure I understand. So this is actually funny because if if an enchantment. Oh, there's a good chance they're actually going to go for that. Lantern bearer too, so I can get rid of all of that stuff. And I'm also playing the hook hand mariner here because this will gain me life uh, if I have another creature, and I could gain four life with it. I really hope they're gonna go with the lantern slave because this has defender. But they have, a, they had even that. This, this thing gives. Am I gonna lose now? Oh, uh, that's like an all in. That's. <laughs> I'm not losing now, and I'm gonna get this. Uh, this hex proof is only you know. Uh, for a limited time. Now what I could do is make it into a knight. But it's too risky. They could, they could have a counter spell. I could pass the turn without playing a spell. And then do this in their upkeep. But the problem is if they have a counter spell I will be miserable. I only you know, miss a one transform, transforming of this marina here. So this has all the abilities, but it doesn't have anything that saves it from this thing. So bye-bye. Uh, and let's hope they don't get anything. I will be gaining the full life from the hunter unless this gets countered. But let's see now what's the last. Okay. Oh, I think now if they cannot counter that, maybe I shouldn't have attacked. Oh. Well, no, it actually, this is a, they had six mana, so it doesn't matter. They would have uh, killed it in response anyway. But uh, I'm gonna get six now, unless they now sp specifically drew another, but they didn't. So um, I can just attack safely. Get six life. And um, I have a 12 power and I will have Another 6-4 because it is night. Spore crawler. Fantastic. I don't actually want to... I don't want a double spell maybe. Do I? I could double spell. But then it becomes... No, it's relevant that it's a 6 power creature, I think. Um, Although then I would have this 3-2. Okay, fine. Yeah, it's it actually doesn't matter. I'd rather have a 4-4 four, four and a 3-2 than 1-6-4. And they just, it's gonna become a knight anyway. And now they just lose. Because of the spore crawler. Well, I'm happy they went for the all the eggs in the same basket because what they should have done, uh, because this is a flash. Yeah, I think the opponent had the easy win if they just were playing around removal because they had the cradle of safety. So what they should have done is definitely just keep this in hand in response to my removal spells to keep it hexproof. But they didn't, and uh. 
I did end up winning this as a result. Now, this is a blue-white deck which has a lot of these enchantments flying things, so <laughs> definitely uh, Crushing Canopy. Seems like the Crushing Canopy will be a pretty darn relevant sideboard card in this format. It's still not maybe enough for me to play this in best of one because of course non-blue, non-white archetypes won't be having a lot of targets for this thing. Uh, but in best of three, this is going to be a great sideboard card for green decks. I'm, I mean, it feels like that. Of course, it has worked very well for, for me in this one event. But anyway, that's just how I feel it goes. And then I will now with the <laughs> graveyard stuff they have, I will definitely play the honored heirloom here and it will be replacing the nature's embrace. Now what I cut from this thing, I think the witch's web is again the same easy cut, but what is the next cut? What did I, I think I cut in the previous game the Wolf Strike? It is still pretty good though. Mm. But am I gonna cut the two drop? Because I think it will be something like that. Maybe the gift of fangs. It is cheap removal though on the stuff they might have. For example, well nothing no, this will get saved by exiling. This doesn't get indestructible like the hallowed, whatever thing was in the earlier set. That gets exiled temporarily, so it can be saved. Oh, is it also a vampire? <laughs> Let's see. No, it's a spirit, all right. Um, this is, no, I, I think the gift of fangs is actually the card I wanna lose now, maybe. I like the wolf strike still. Um, Yeah, okay, it's time to just, I mean, I'm almost running out of time, so let's just, um, Submit that deck. Okay, so I have two games here. If I win either of them, I'll get uh, some some reward. Okay, this is a good hand. Um, yeah, I have the two drop, and I might be able to use the wolf strike to kill something that has up to two toughness on turn three. And then, of course, with these four lands, I only need three. So if the game isn't super fast over and they did mulligan so opponents in this ev event seem to have taken a lot of mulligans and they, and they have only had like a two color decks uh, at least based on what i have seen so um they were just unluckier than i okay so the land wasn't bad because i do want to have a dreadfast demon happening on turn seven crossing canopy will be good too sure is that a syncopate could be if it is well then it is I guess it could have been something worse than that. Target for the canopy. Oh, uh, that thing gives you... Okay, that's a good one too. Man. I wish I had my creature, though the wolf strike would actually do something. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna kill the one-man flyer, so... I need to draw some creatures. Some creatures, please. Well, I'm taking only two here. It's not such a big deal here now, but... Uh, if they have if they have a big four drop that isn't gonna have flying, might be in trouble. Okay, so let's see if they have another counter spell. At least I drew a cre drew a creature here. More single page perhaps. No, not this time. So what's it gonna be then? It is going to be a. Uh, Nothing they wanted to play. Could be a pump spell or something like that. Uh, and as the battlefield or becomes a target of an aura spell, they get those spirit tokens, okay? And then the aura version, when the aura version enters the battlefield, or the enchanted creature becomes the target of an yeah, basically it's the same ability, stick to the aura there. Okay, they don't have an attack with the one one. So now, am I gonna get my flyer? So this thing has training, but it also has flying. So, uh, it's... Oh, and this gets plus two plus oh as long as the opponent controls a human. So this thing, I get to deal five now. Now this has training, but um, also what it has is... I mean, what they don't have is a creature that has more power than this. But if this thing attacks, you may pay one, two... Target the attacking creature with that. Okay, so they can fly with more than one guy. It doesn't actually matter at all. So, the safe thing. No, I'm actually gonna see what happens. I can play the crossing. Am I gonna take four though? I guess with two crossing cannabis, maybe I could use now one when it's somewhat um, 
I mean, they are tapped out and all that. Okay, I will, I will just do this because they are tapped out. So this is a safe way to deal with this. I still have this interaction left. And after one land draw, I will be able to have this 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, it's not a 7-7, seven, seven, it's a 7-mana 6-6. Six, six. Uh, that said, well, I mean... <sighs> sacrificing this invader is still gonna make this into a 6-6, six, six, but it also becomes a token, so bounce spells will be better, so... I'm currently maybe not that interested in playing this thing. There's no human now. Okay, the heirloom is gonna be pretty decent. Um, so how do I do it? So I'm only going to race here now, I think. I'm definitely playing the heirloom here, but I cannot... What I cannot do... I can't use the crossing canopy. I mean, sorry, the wolf strike and then exile this, because that's something I could be doing. I guess I'll just take five now. See what they play. Maybe use the wolf strike, maybe not. Depends on what they're gonna do. I can I feel like I can take the take the fifth here. Yeah. That's a nice one. So definitely I will be killing actually that thing. It is a human though, so kinda awkward. Do I have to sacrifice? Yeah, I do. So this becomes... Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Why did I get the spore crawler? Huh. But... I mean, I will have two 6-6 six, six flyers. How can they d deal with both of them? They cannot. They can bounce the other the token if they have a bounce spell. But then they would have to deal something somehow this thing. And then if I can play the spore crawler on the next turn, I will sacrifice that to draw a card and get another 6-6 six, six token. So let's see. Five mana could theoretically, but I don't know. Well, two bounce spells, but this comes back from a bounce spell. The pacifism variant doesn't do anything. Okay, first time I'm seeing this great card here, by the way. Only one creature card in the graveyard. So what do I do here? Well, I don't think I'm not going to attack. They can have the destroy an attacking creature. That costs only. S that would cost only two mana. But no, they have a tapped this thing. Yeah, they, that's tapped. Okay, now that seems like they have the destroy target attacking creature, or maybe they don't. Because they tapped the token. It's a 6 mana spell otherwise, but against an attacker it will be... And I have two creatures, so I think I'm not gonna attack. I'm gonna play around that, because I will have on the next turn, look at this. Four six six flyers. Now this won't untap, but um, it's something I can deal with. I will have... Both of these will be sacrificed. And this, this thing will also draw me a card, this ball crawler. Syncopato, that kind of stuff won't work here now. Is there a two mana counter spell that works in this situation? Okay, so now this happens. <laughs> Sacrifice that, draw a card. Yeah, there was a reason I picked this seven drop. Disciple, I can't cast it because it's my end step, but still a fine draw. Any creature will be fine. So now um, I can just uh, start attacking even if they can kill one of these. Okay, that has lifelink and all that, but. It also has flying and crossing canopy. Um, can kill a flyer. Now they can still... 
not die here, but let's do this first. Um, although they can... No, they are not going to... Oh, I can kill, I can exile it too. Wait a second. Can I do everything? This costs two mana, tap this. Yes, and with the land, I have seven mana. Wow. Okay, so definitely... Although maybe I should first... Well, first I should do this. Let's see what happens. They do have something up. Okay, that was that thing. Actually, uh, something to consider. It's gonna be a 6-6 six, six now. Lifelink and all that. Well, that was the stuff they had. Still, they have to... Oh, yeah, they have to block with it. Because. Of course. They would die otherwise. They have one jump blocker here. So I can still exile it. And play the Disciple. They will gain some life, but the important part is to get rid of the... The Katilda here. Don't say you have something for the one mana that actually is gonna somehow. That's 12. I, I know that. Okay, they don't have the jump lock with the spirit because they will gain life here. That's true. That's true. Uh, they will be at three here still. But I will now, of course, immediately. Well, play this thing and then exile the Katilda, of course. Okay, so I don't think they can deal 10 to me, especially when I have a 6-6 six, six blocker here. Is there a Wrath of God in this uh, format for these colors? Yeah, there's the white. Choose a number up to 13. Uh, each player sacrifices that many creatures. Oh, they have this thing, but it's not gonna help this. It doesn't even fly. It's otherwise an amazing card, of course. But my 7-drop beat there. There's mostly because I drew mine, mine first. Alright, so I won two games with my first pick in the draft. That I will classify that as a bum rare, even though it is a very expensive one. But this... Well, you just have to play enough ways to get mana to, to have the you know 7-drop available. That's just how it goes. And my deck did have enough mana, mana available. Alright, so um, this was the first event of this set. Um, no mythic rares. Of course, I still am gonna, you know, complete the Crimson Bow set, which means if I see a mythic rare in a draft, I will pick it, even if it doesn't go to my deck, and even if there's something actually good for my deck, I will just want to complete the set in 50 to 60 draft events, ideally. Um, but I won't have to rare draft regular rares, of course. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I will try to have a daily upload of a draft, and I will uh, switch between traditional draft and a premier draft. I won't be playing any quick drafts. Uh, I prefer to draft with a you know, human pod, and um, I also like the you know the higher stakes price structure that is in the premier draft and traditional draft. I like it more than the quick draft, and also I will be. I will be playing some best of three sealed deck events. Not a lot, but maybe at least one, maybe maybe more than that, but at least one at some point. Um, yeah, well, the deck here, but good to know. I hope they fix this stupid bug. I mean, I should be able to play with five, five to uh, these things, of course, in limited. There's no four card limit. Um, but uh, in the end, I guess there was the one game when I where I didn't draw any early drops. Could I have won that? Maybe, who knows? I'm not gonna ask for a refund just because of that. I'm still happy to get the two match wins. And uh, other than that, yeah, I, I mean, if this card was in um, uh, Midnight Hunt, this is so much better than the common werewolves in the set. I mean, this is the what werewolves should be. A very good front side with an, uh, a reasonable improvement when it's night. So yeah, I don't know what why they had so bad commons, common werewolves in the previous set. That was the werewolf set. And uh, the Innocent Traveler, I first thought that maybe it's too slow. You have to play a 4 mana 1-3. One, one, it's also double caster. Sometimes you don't have double black on turn 4. And then uh, it's just a 1-3. It won't be able to block that well. 
but I guess it is in the end a four mana 3-3 three, three flyer that occasionally will be a 5-3 because there's of course a lot of humans for every color in, in this strategy set. So this will be a 5-3 somewhat often. So maybe this is like um not like a very high pick for drop, I don't think, but it's it's a card you should consider running in whenever you have space for um a room for four drops in your deck. And the double cast requirement isn't isn't gonna be too tough. I really like the spore crawler. I mean just by reading the card this should be very decent in limited. Three mana three two when it dies draws a card. Yeah that that's a solid card for sure. It's gonna be the bread and butter uh, green common three drop in the in this format it feels like you're never gonna cut these cards i don't think you you won't be first picking them of course but you you're happy to run these as your curve fillers and um this is an interesting card a mana producer that becomes into a five five seems pretty decent and it continues produ produ producing mana too so this that is this is a good three mana mana rock and uh yeah the what else? Uh, crossing Canopy, when you are playing best of three and you have a green deck, at least in this event, did perform amazingly. Of course, I did play a lot of against blue decks and that had these flyers and the enchantments, but uh, uh, still keep in mind when you are drafting a green deck, you should pick these. I mean, not only when it comes to you as a pick number 12 or so, but you should consider picking these from a mediocre packs somewhere around pick four to pick eight easily you can pick a good sideboard card over some some mediocre random playable and yeah hoping that they will <laughs> fix the bug regarding this uh, more than four copies of a card and now uh, when you draft your deck and you end up with more than four copies of a card just don't cut them if you so first of all put them to your deck in the draft portion and don't cut them unless you are absolutely certain you will be wanting to cut go go below five all right that's it enough talk uh, next one will be a premier draft i will see you then thank you for watching and well maybe i'll just claim the price so you see these gems and packs wow <laughs> okay uh, thank you for watching and bye bye